very first day that I was painting, um, there was this there was this young boy, like, I mean, I was just putting, like, the first strokes up on, and there was, like, this little kid, like, standing behind me with his mom, and, I mean, he was, like, four or five years, three or four years old, something like that, and just the way he was, like, staring at me and staring at the wall and everything like that, it, it looked like a little kid looking at, like, Six Flags, you know, so I, I, I went over to him and I gave him a brush and just let him go ham for a little bit and get messy and everything like that, because it reminded me of me. Like, it was like a back to the future. Like, I was like four years old. Like, that is exactly how I used to look at walls. And I used to get messy with everything. I mean, God bless my mom. Whether I'm working on a sketch or I'm working on a mural like that in a public forum, I try to get back to that little kid just like that before there was money, before there was competition or like this idea of trying to please people or likes or whatever it is. It was just me and having fun. Pure fun. That's it. My name is Chris Rogers, a um, professional artist, and I've been in Austin, Texas since uh, August 2012. Sharing the second rendition of my mural on Truffle Jacome with the community was daunting to say the least. <laughs> Still get butterflies from it. And I was able to put some people in that mural that had passed away that were really important to the community. So, I mean, they were like mothers and brothers and kids, uh, families and friends that hadn't seen each other in a long time, reuniting and taking pictures in front of their loved ones. It was a celebration in the best sense of the word. We on the east side, the east side. So the timeline of the the mural on 12th and Chacon from when I first started at the first one at the end of 2013, I was working on it for like a month and a half and I would go down there every day. By the end of that, there were people that would come out and just watch me paint. It was, it was more than just people passing by and saying, hey man, good job, you know, like it was something that brought some life to that area. You know, even though I didn't get paid to do that job, it was, I mean, that was more than payment right there. I think it was May of 2017 that I was informed via Facebook that it was painted over, that it had been whitewashed. And um, <clears throat> that, that made my heart sink. Murals get painted over, they do. I mean, it's the price of doing public art, but the way in which it, had, it was painted drastically like that, they, like they didn't consult the community at all because I, I knew that it meant a lot to that area. Then Six Square, the Black Culture Arts District, got involved. They hosted some community meetings in which uh, really started a conversation. More than just discussing the murals, how do we preserve these murals and keep something like this from happening again? These murals say something, they communicate something that, that, that words can't always. You know, I wanted to think about some of the things that had been transpiring in my life and kind of correlate to that, to what's been happening on the east side. In 2000, what was it, 2009, is when my mother passed away. And that was, I mean, she was everything to me. She is everything to me. She was the reason I got into art. She was the reason I excelled at everything, you know. She was an empath. She was a person that just made you feel good about being you, no matter what. And it wasn't just with me, it was with everybody, you know. And so when I lost her, it was just like, it felt like, you know, I was picked up and chucked into the middle of the Pacific Ocean and not knowing how to swim, you know what I mean? So that's when my alcoholism went from maybe we should pump the brakes on this to what the hell. It got way out of control and, um, you know, it was three, four years before I, I was able to get sober and get help and begin the path of feeling. That's really what's allowed my art to not just grow but flourish. 
when I finished that mural the first time back in January 2014, a week later I got sober. It has been a, a journey mentally, spiritually, physically. There's just so much that I've had to feel and experience and accept and the biggest thing that I've had to accept is, is, is change. It's constant and there's something freeing and liberating about being able to accept change and it's not an easy thing. What I wanted to communicate in, in there is I wanted to have iconic fa faces for sure, but you know, people from the past, I wanted people from the present, people from some future people too. And, and I really wanted to have people up there that were connected. Like I had James Brown up there and Michael Jackson, Jimi Hendrix and Jackie Vinson and Gary Clark Jr. and uh, some contemporaries like the Peterson brothers and uh, Riders Against the Storm. And like all these people are connected on some level, either directly or indirectly, and together they have the phoenix in the middle. Overcoming change, rebirth, rejuvenation, recreation, and that is what I really wanted to communicate about that whole, what's been going on with the east side. It's like, look, just because this is happening and this is unfair and it's wrong, like, it's not the end. This is just a, this is a flip of the page. This is, this is, far from over. There's so much more that can be gained from accepting this change and moving forward. In the very middle of that mural, there's an image of Salvador Dali, like with his head back and eyes wide open and these tentacles kind of jutting out of his ears. And that, that is, to me, that negativity in the mind is just constantly going and swirling around. I'm not good enough. What does that person think? Or like, whatever it is. And if you'll notice that I put that little boy, that same little boy, I had a picture of him. I used that picture to have him, the paintbrush, to communicate that he's painting this whole thing. That little kid's painting this whole thing and these the tentacles are kind of wrapping around his legs because, you know, that's what it is. It's like my mind constantly trying to take me away from that, that pure place, that happy place, that, that natural place.